Morning folks. Welcome to our Bible study this morning. We're going to be looking at the same scripture as we looked at last time and we're going to be looking at the second part of it. Um, it's the great commandment to love God and to love one's neighbour. So we will be looking at uh, three scriptures, Matthew 22, 34 to 40, Leviticus 19 and verse 18 and 1 John 4 verses 7 to 12. So let's look at those scriptures now. We'll start with the uh, Matthew narrative from so from Matthew 22 verses 34 to 40. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hung on these two commandments. And then to Leviticus 19 and verse 18, which says this, Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbour as yourself. I am the Lord. And then we'll look at the last scripture today, which is in 1 John 4, uh, verse 7 to 12. And it says this, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Father, I pray as ever that you add your Holy Spirit to our Bible study this morning so that we may learn from you and understand your will for us and learn to love our neighbours and maybe even love ourselves. In Jesus' name, Amen. In an article uh, named Tulip, a fellow called John Gerstner quotes a modern psychologist saying, Man as sinner hates God, hates man, and hates himself. He would kill God if he could. He does kill his fellow man when he can, and he commits spiritual suicide every day of his life. And when we look deep into the deceitfulness of our hearts, which is referred to in Jeremiah 17 and verse 9, we can see what he means, maybe even agree with him. Yet God's commandment for us is to love our neighbour as ourselves. How do we do that? How do we learn to love our neighbours? And in some cases, how do we learn to love ourselves? The first clue is in the, the first few words of the second part of the scripture. When Jesus said, the second is like it. Like what? Well, it's like the first, which is to love God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our mind. Loving our neighbour, therefore, is an outflowing of our love for God. Once we learn to love God, then that overflows so that we start to love our neighbours. To love God, we must first know personally, firsthand and experience of God's love for us. So the second clue is to love your neighbour as yourself. And that's where some of us come a bit unstuck because we find it very difficult to love ourselves, let alone our neighbour. So how do we get to love ourselves? And so if God loves us to the extent of sending his son to die on the cross for our sins, the atoning sacrifice, then how can we not love ourselves? And to fully understand that, you have to link that to the creation narrative in Genesis, where it tells us that we were made in the image of God. All human beings are made with the image of God. So therefore, every human being has dignity and worth as bearers 
of the image of God. It doesn't mean to say we physically look like God. It means that there is something about us that reflects God. Perhaps it's our ability to love at all. Perhaps it's our ability to be kind and merciful. Perhaps it's our understanding of justice. Perhaps it's our understanding of how it is to protect somebody. Perhaps it's our understanding of self-sacrifice. Perhaps it's in our understanding of humility. Perhaps it's in our understanding of any one of those gifts uh, or attributes of the Holy Spirit that is within us that reflects God. So actually to love ourselves is to allow ourselves to be transformed by the Holy Spirit to be more Christ-like, to allow God's love to transform us, to be more like him. When we choose to love others as ourselves, then we choose to release the love that God has for us and pours out on us. We choose to release that towards other people. And therefore that expression of the love that he has for us reaches toward perfection in our love for other people not just a familial love that we have for our family members or our partners, our wife or husband or our children. It's actually in our love for others, our neighbours. And perhaps if we regard ourselves and think, well, we don't deserve God's love, then perhaps there are neighbours that don't deserve our love, but we love them nevertheless, because God loves us nevertheless. So as we experience God's love and allow ourselves to express God's love, towards other people then we are transformed by that love and actually so are they so let's pray father i do pray that you help us to learn certainly to love you but also to recognize your love in our lives and in ourselves and learn to love ourselves and therefore turn that so that we can love other people that's almost the trinity we love you we love ourselves but it's so that we can express your love to other people father that can take some transformation there are some people that don't have a problem with that but there are other people that really do and there are all kinds of people in between father help us to be transformed into the humble people of god that know how to love god and how to love other people as ourselves in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you folks, and I pray that as you go about your stuff, your life this week, even in this time of isolation, you reflect on God's love for you and learn to turn God's love for you into a love for your neighbour as you love yourself, so that that love is expressed. So God bless you.